So uh, let's have a look at your car. I understand you've got a new front spoiler. Yep, carbon uh, GTS replica. Okay, okay. Fits a treat. It does look like it fits a treat, actually. It looks, it looks gorgeous. I actually looks, love it. Looks very, very low. It is quite low. Um, my car's 10 mil lower in factory, being a competition pack. Um, it was in my mind, oh, that was it. shall I have it, shall I not? And then I just thought to myself, sod it, I'll go and get it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll go and get it. If it gets ripped off, I'll repair it. Um, paint it set in black, like the genuine GTS one. Yes. Carbon. And it's likely to degrade over time because carbon, like carbon will be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Depending on how much lacquer has been put on it to start with. Okay, so you had before the splitters like I've got I in had my the, car. Uh, yeah, the performance corner splitters. Uh, managed to get them off while I was still in perfect condition. Are those items for sale? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, um, and you had to front, you had to respray the front bumper at the yeah, same I had time. Yeah, respray the front bumper because uh, when they was bonded on by BMW. Uh, when it was new, they were bonded down here, and obviously once you pulled them off, you, uh, you you're left with a, a big line of black bonding. So, and you just haven't put your cap back on. No, yet. I haven't put the cap back on. So I forgot to paint that. Okay. <laughs> so you flatted it down, didn't paint it? Yeah, I flatted it down and then forgot to paint it. Okay. So the wheels that you've got on this car uh -huh. are they standard wheels? They're standard competition pack wheels. The same wheels that came on the M3 GTS. So they, yeah, they make my car 10 millimeters lower. GTS wheels on it. So that sits visibly lower than my car. Yep, yeah, visibly lower, yeah. And I can't help but notice the brakes that are on there. Oh yes. Can you tell me about them, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> the brakes are kind of uh, a bit of an in-house thing. Uh, the, the brakes, are, the calipers are from a Lamborghini range, the Audi R8 range, Porsche Cayenne Turbo. We managed to get them to fit onto some custom brake discs, 390 millimeters by 36 mil. Wow. Some custom brackets made up that they fit in there nicely. As you can see, there's only one mil gap between the caliper and the uh, wheel. Okay, so you're talking about just there. Because the wheel's black, you can't really see it so much. No. We haven't had any uh, issues. And have you no, been to Nürburgring uh, since having those brakes? Yeah, we've done uh, three trips to the Nürburgring. Oh wow. Yeah, 65 laps, pushing quite hard. And are they noticeably better? Noticeably better. Because yeah. the, the BMW brakes, they are, they're decent enough. They get a good yeah. initial bite, yeah, yeah, you're right, good enough. Um, but when you start pushing on and um, trying to stop 16, 1700 kilos from big speeds, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, a little bit better brakes. Okay. And we've got some studs here as well. Right? Yeah, that's the uh, stud and nut kit conversion. Why would you have them on there? Initially, uh, stud and nut kits came from uh, when you fit in cylinder heads on big turbocharged cars because you could get the get the cylinder head tighter. Right. So people just sort of like probably got on the bandwagon and thought, yeah, this looks kind of cool. Manufacturers are doing it. The M3 GTS had them. Um, there's no real advantage to having them. They look good and it kind of makes it easier to locate the wheel. Yeah, that, see, that if, would be the only reason I would yeah. think that they would be good. But yeah, if, they, if you've got wheel spaces on a car, anyone that's got wheel spaces would know that when you're trying to line the wheel up, you get the wheel lined up with the brake disc, but then the wheel spaces turn. So we've got a Nürburgring dick on the side here as well. Cool, it's very subtle. You've got the carbon wing mirrors. Are they standard? They, they was, um, Again, from the former catalog. I've actually got those as well. Excellent. It's one of my favourite things. Yeah, I love them. Extended vent pack on the bonnet. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and uh, a slightly deeper dish wheel on the back as well. Yeah. Brakes on this one standard. Brakes on the back are standard. Yeah. We found that there's a lovely balance at the moment between having big brakes on the front. Normally, when you put a big brake kit on the front, sort of put an imbalance, and then the back tries to overtake you if you're in a bit of a situation with no dramas whatsoever. The brake pedal still feels really good. So uh, at the moment, we're not gonna go for a big brake conversion on the back. Just got fancy pads in the back. Now, uh, I know that the rear spoiler isn't standard. Nope. And uh, I know that you're always an OEM guy and you like to have all the best the BMW manufactured parts. So I know this is quite an expensive part. Yeah. I can't have anything like that on mine because it never yeah, had it as standard. Yeah. yeah. Although they're only available for coupes, really. Yeah. Uh, even the saloon had a slightly smaller spoiler. And it just sits so nice and flush as well. Nice yeah. 
And as you know, we, we fitted one to the back of mine and it just was scrap, wasn't it? So, uh, well, yeah. it, was, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just wanted to look at these exhaust pipes. Now, these were black last time I saw them, but they are, they are custom. How big are those? They're 82 millimeters. 82, so the standard ones are 78. Yeah. But that extra four mil just in the makes circumference. Them, makes them look so much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, last time we did see them, they were black, but they do get quite hot and um, they give them that titanium look now. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And and um, you've got a test pipes uh, replacement for the primary catalytic converters. Yep, Max Chanel test pipes. Make okay, good. Quite a bit of noise. And released quite a bit of power as well. And along with a remap, there's there's along extra gains to be had yep. there as well. Yeah. And I've heard it, and it sounds nice. Yeah. Noticed. Obviously, I noticed it because you suggested I should do the same. But we've got a um, an Alcantara steering wheel. Uh huh. I can't eat McDonald's without wearing some blue gloves <laughs> in case I get a little bit of mo minor grease. And my people have laughed in the past. Uh, you know, can I touch your steering wheel? Have you got clean hands? It's, it's, it's the most fantastic modification I did for mine. Yeah. And I noticed also you you put a, a handbrake, handbrake yeah. on there as well. Yeah, I had to do that. I'm trying to get it similar to my old TSL. The uh, steering wheel is a fantastic modification. Just makes the car feel faster. Never been a fan of blue cars, but this is a, it's a nice blue. It's a nice blue. And it, it doesn't seem to have the mottled effect that mine has. No. Um. <laughs> you mean the orange pill? The orange pill, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, mine's had a full flat polish. Okay, yeah, we, we flattened the orange pill off. And um, as you say, they do look really jammy and looks like it's painted in some backstreet barn. Yeah, yeah. Even though BMW have done it, it's got ceramic lacquer on it. BMW says it's slightly scratch resistant. But it's not, no. Big to differ with that. No. So, uh... against differences between our cars because I'm in the passenger seat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it always feels so much faster in a car when you've got... Well, the thing is, like, modifying a fast car is always difficult because the car's fast from factory. So by putting another 20, 30 horsepower into it, it doesn't really give you massive amounts of feeling. It's only when you put that car back to back if it's got the same gearbox. Yeah, trying to put a DCT next to a manual car is almost impossible. <laughs> as well. I am considering decat in mine.
know, I just the, the way it was sort of sort of yumping. If like me, you've never had the opportunity or even the inclination to get up close with an i8, but wonder what is so special about it? Is it a supercar? I've actually always had a fairly negative opinion on the i8, although it is undoubtedly a technological marvel. I've always thought at the price point of £100,000, it's overpriced when considering the M-series cars with true performance credentials which sit beneath it in the BMW range.